when I saw that scene for the first time, I, I think I almost shut my, my pants because I wasn't expecting it. Like that skin, see, that scene frightened me. <sighs> Batman begins. Um, so, this, this was the interesting one. So, let's, we have to just back up just a, a little bit, man. So, you had a situation where um, Batman was in the dust, based off Batman and Robin. So, nobody wanted to, to, to touch Batman because that was just horrible. So, one is where, if we're going to recreate this, we've got to do it right. And I think we want to now learn the lesson from Batman Forever. You know what? It's funny. There's going to be a thing. All roads lead back to Batman Returns. So based on how dark Batman Returns was, it's forced Warner Brothers to go light with Batman Forever. Then they went a bit too light with Batman and Robin. But I think when they said, we're now looking, we now have to reboot and start from scratch now. We can't continue. Like Batman Robin was such a mess that we can't continue. We have to do a reboot. And I think Batman Begins was really the first film that's really popularized the whole reboot thing so they said that look we've got to go back to what we did with tim Burton to begin with which is go serious but at the same time let's go serious but not creepy because we have to bring in the kids i know it's interesting that it's crazy that we don't have a rated 15 per month phone but it is what it is man um so you have um Chris Nolan coming through. And this was, he was known as the indie guy. You know, this is the guy from the, 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 the following, the incredible Memento, an absolutely outstanding film, the amazing prestige, Insomnia with um, Robin Williams and Al Pacino. So he comes from the indie circle. So, and I think that's obviously, Nolan was like, look, if we are doing a reboot, you have to have a take. I think Nolan's take was like, let's try and set this in the real world. Because it's something that I've never done because Tim Burton's take was um, mystical, mythical, atmospheric, where Batman is sort of like an otherworldly figure. And it's a lot more psychological in a very spiritual sense. Batman Forever and Batman Returns was kids, lights up, goody, happy, boom. So what none was I know, what if Batman existed in New York? New York is New York. It's a real city and we just put Batman in that city. So that was the take. And I think that when you look at Begins, and I've thought about this, Begins, in my opinion, has the greatest cast of any film. A film that had Christian Bale. I also saw Christian Bale coming off of Equilibrium and American Psycho. So you had Christian Bale, Gary Oldman, Morgan Freeman, and Ross Cure, and from Blade Runner, uh, Michael Caine, Tom Wilkinson, um, what's it called? Oh, Ken Watanabe. It says, I <laughs> just, just look at the roster from top to bottom. It is an incredible roster. And I think once you saw that cast and the fact that the guy who did these indie films like Memento and Prestige was coming to, to, to do this, you thought, okay, all right, this is, is going to be, this is going to be interesting. So it's going to be interesting. And it, when you saw the teaser and the trailer, like, oh, 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 okay, we're, we're flipping this. Okay, so... So we're, so, so we're on that time. We're not that we're on that time. So, okay, this is different now. And I think, look, Begins... We'll get to the other films, but I can say Begins is the best film in the trilogy because what Begins is, is for the first time in any Batman film, this really, really delved into Batman, the character. We knew Bruce Wayne, but we also knew Batman. Everything was, was, was really about him and everything really centered around him. And you could tell that Christian Bale was starving because... He just gave everything to, to the role. And the voice. Because remember, me and my brother, we watched like a like an early kind of preview full footage of the begins that I think they, they, it showed you like a few scenes. So it was, just, it was like an extended kind of preview. And this person like actually had the voice. And me and my brother were like, damn, that's that's pretty extreme. But as we played it again and again, I said, okay, we I think it's bold. And it's a bold swing. But I get what he's doing with this, you know. So, Begins ultimately is, and it's a very good, good film. It's a very, very good film. Um, amazing p p performances. 
Um, again, I thought that Carolman as Gordon was great because literally, Car I, Carolman literally was literally nailed on the character that you saw in Barmani won by Frank Frank Miller. You know, um, this and I see this suit was simple but effective because in the suit it really felt as, as if like Batman he looked like a beast, you know. So, um, and it was just so refreshing and interesting seeing a film that um, was so refreshing and so different, but really seeing Batman in a realistic sense because we've never seen Batman. Oh, this is Batman, like. If Batman was actually real in the real world, everything was just sort of like a heightened re reality because Tim Burton's Gotham, um, Joe Schumacher's Gotham, and even from the Adam West TV show, the Gotham was heightened. Was, no, this is if Gotham is truly real, and that's what made it exciting. Um, but Begins wasn't perfect, and I think that when I, because when I, when I watched Begins, the first few times, bro, I was. My mind was blown. I was like, ah! because I watched it in the cinema, boom, straight away when it came out. Then I think I watched it like in a day or two after. So I was like, poor power is blah 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 blah. So it was super exciting. But I think as time went on and I went back to it, the emitter. And I think this is the issue when you bring in David S. Goya because David S. Goya was the co writer for, for this. The emitter was st stupid. And I felt that Razal Gold should have been Ken while Oh, I almost forgot Liam Neeson. So, hmm, if you hear the stories about Liam Neeson and black people, you know, just to the side. Um, but Liam Neeson, I, I, I didn't really, uh, him being the main villain, um, nah. I was not, I mean, I was, I, I, I was, I wasn't feeling that, bro. Honestly speaking, I was, I wasn't feeling that. Like, I preferred, I'd have preferred it if Ken Watanabe was Razal Gold and was that main dude. Because I think, what I, th when I saw the trailer, what I thought would happen was, Batman, obviously, he'd go to Gotham, but Ken Watanabe's Razal Go survived, and he'd actually go to Gotham and fight him in the League of, as a League of Shadows. Another big, and this is something that is going to be a theme in this trilogy, I'm sorry, but a really big drawback of what was a very, very strong first film was um, the fighting. The fighting's atrocious. The fighting's atrocious. Because the first fighting was great. When you see them at the docks and Batman is just like this shadow that's moving, that's great because aha, see for, for for the first time you, you don't know what is is it, 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 you do not know what you're hitting, so it was greater for the first time. But when you actually see proper fightings happening and so forth, and you can't see what the hell is happening, uh it was a mess. It was it was a complete mess. I mean, it was it was a complete mess. I was like. Just the, the filming, because again, there was actually a fight style that was created specifically for this film. But Nolan just didn't know how to freaking film it, you know? So that was just the, the, the problem there. But although, bro, this is what I was saying. People always say, like, you know, since in my opinion, this is just from my personal opinion. My personal opinion, the greatest or the best ending scene to me is, is the Batman Begins end scene. Like, um, I said, nice. <laughs> well, I couldn't find any more buses. Well, start. Oh, it's Lieutenant now. You really started something. Bad cops running scared. Hope in the streets. But, but now it's lost. We can pick up crane up half the inmates of Arkham City free. We will. We can bring Gotham back. What about escalation? Escalation. We start buying semi automatics. Start buying automax. We start wearing Kevlar. We start buying all prison rounds. And, and, and you're in the mask. Jumping off rooftops. Take this guy, for instance. Double homicide. Armed robbery. Got a Face for the theatrical like you, he leaves a calling card. I'll look to it. I never say thank you. And then wrapped it. I have been seeing that scene since 05. Whether I'm in the shower, whether I'm walking, it's just, and this just, off, I know, I'm not even if it was off the top of my head. I've been saying that scene to my head all the way through since 05. So I. Just completely memorize that whole scene because I watched that scene so many times. Because this, the reason why that scene was so good because you saw the character between Batman and Gordon. They worked so well against each other. Christian Bale and Gary Oldman had a great chemistry, and the way it sets up the next film. When you just turned over and you saw that Joker cut, you're like, oh, bro. When I saw that Joker in the cinema, I, I lost my mind. I was because, yeah, the, the film was uneven and everything, but that scene was so strong. It was so well written, the interplay was so well good between both of them. 
And we just see the joke, the joke, and I was like, I was like, okay, it's like, it, like it's gotten real, like it's gotten real. Um, so you know, for me, but I still think that we'll get to the other films, we'll get to the other films because, but for me, it begins as the strongest of the trilogy because I just feel it was everybody was at their best. I felt that Gary Oldman was at his best, Kristen Bill was at his best because in this film, the voice worked, the suit worked, the character worked, the character was at his best. He felt scary, bro. Like, um, where are the other dogs going? Swear to me! Like, when I saw that scene for the first time, I, I think I almost shut my, my pants because I wasn't like, expecting it. Like, that scene, see, that scene frightened me. But I was like, whoa, 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 what the hell? So, I, I know it's a funny thing that, so, before they, they, before they started filming, like, Nolan instructed his whole crew to watch Blade Runner. You know, not 2099, like the real Blade Runner by Ridley Scott. But I said, no, I want the film to look like this. I know how in Blade Runner it's very gritty, it's always raining, everything is jumbled up and so forth. So I think he wanted the, to have this, that's the same aesthetic that they had in Blade Runner. So yeah, look, man, Batman Begins, it's, it is still a very, very good film. One of the best comic book films ever made for sure, man. And it successfully rebooted... Um, if I'm, and for me, if you think about it, it's probably the only... Because it's... You know how they say that the first isn't always the best? This was the first film to reboot a franchise, and it's still the best reboot of um, a franchise. <laughs>